hey, Jim, welcome uh, back to the RP show. Happy off season. Although, is it ever? Is it ever really for you in off season? No. No, we got the Aggies playing tonight. I was at New Mexico State. I was one of those coaches fired from there years ago. So to see the Aggies <laughs> playing against Liberty to win a championship, unbelievable. Now, there's so, there's so much great stuff to talk about. I mean, I can't tell you I'm really interested in if Miami's going to beat Washington Commanders by 10 or what I, that doesn't yeah. at the college games. Then you got Georgia, Alabama. You got, I mean, the game tonight, Washington and Oregon. Shoot, the last time I watched them play, Farhan Lalji, who is as big a Washington fan, he's actually in Las Vegas, just sent me a, a little picture of him and his sons, and, and they're down there for that game. He's the hugest Washington fan in the world. And if you remember that game, it looked like Washington was going to lose, and I had to massage him through it so he didn't have a heart attack in the middle of our broadcast. <laughs> okay, well, listen, I'm glad that you've set the stage for the game that's in Las Vegas tonight. For the Canadians that are watching, and you know it's a hockey country, you've been in Canada long enough. I'm trying to get my mind around the college scene down here in the States, and it's taken me a while because it's so immense. How would you explain it to Joe Average Canadian what's about to happen with the conference championships, bowl season, and don't even talk about transfer portal yet. Just try to boil down what's about to happen over the next month. Well, basically, up here, we don't know a lot of who the players are. So the fact Bo Nix is playing quarterback for Oregon, nobody knows he was at Auburn for four years. Or, uh, you know, and Michael Penix was at Indiana, and now he's the quarterback for Washington. And that those two guys are probably the leading candidates to be the Heisman Trophy winner, which goes to the best player, just like the heck Brighton, up here at the NU Sports. So. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that when you watch the games, they're very exciting. The crowds are huge. Uh, this Las Vegas game should be really interesting. It's at a, in a local site at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. And uh, again, just a phenomenal game. The number three ranked team in the country basically getting 10 points from the number five ranked team. So uh, they play to, to get to a, a group of four that will be in the championship. Now, New Mexico State Liberty, I'm probably the only person in Canada that really cares about that one. But uh, maybe Kent Austin followers, maybe because of Liberty. But that's because I was at New Mexico State in 1985, and it was my first Division I job. And um, again, we used to call it Lost Causes. It's in Las Cruces. We called it Lost Causes because <laughs> coaches just went there to die. So, uh, but to see them playing tonight, uh, Jerry Kill is the head coach there, just a fantastic coach, went through a heart attack, had seizure problems. He's a good friend of Gary Patterson, who used to be the head coach at TCU, who's he and I broke in together back in. He was at, at Sonoma State, and I was at San Francisco State back when those schools played football. They don't anymore. So college football in the U.S. is exciting this time of year. It's like the NFL. The NFL is not exciting right now, but the NFL is going to get exciting here in the next couple of weeks. But right now, college football is where it's at. I mean, you got Georgia and Alabama, and if if Alabama happens to beat Georgia, who is undefeated and the two-time defending champion with just one loss, Georgia, the two-time defending champion, will be out of the playoffs. They won't even have a chance to defend their championship. That's how big a game it is. So, uh, you know, it, it's exciting because every game is huge in college football down in the States. There, You lose a game, like, Oregon's lost one game. That was to Washington. Now, they can make up for it by beating them tonight and get themselves back into the hunt to possibly be in the playoffs. But it'll still be a question mark. So there's great excitement with that. Almost as much excitement as Canada's team hiring their head coach yesterday. Uh, and we're going to go there but I want next. But I want to say... I appreciate the talk from you because I, with my friends down here, it's all they're talking about is what you just rattled off for the last four or five minutes. It's, they're all on top of it. Um, but let me ask you this. You, you said you're sitting in Canada. Before we talk about the riders hiring Corey Mace, what is it about Canada that made you want to come and stay, not just for the CFL, but also in this cold off season, these cold off seasons? Well, everything but the weather. But in the off season, you can go out. My kids live in Las Vegas, my kids and grandkids. So I can go down there anytime and get 
nicer weather and uh you know so but i actually stay here all year round and uh everything else about canada i just find better and it's i after i got fired in 17 i got my citizenship because I didn't want to be told, you know, a permanent resident here isn't necessarily a permanent resident. And you could, I, you know, I could have been left with who knows what at, at my age. And, you know, I'm in that social security um, point now. And uh, so I wanted to be set in where I was. And, you know, I, I, I live here year round and um, I just, I, I love Canada. It's just, it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but it's kind of more me. I'm more comfortable here than I am down in Las Vegas or in LA or some of the places, you know, I was always a West Coaster uh, down there, born and raised in California. So uh, no, it's it's been a simple decision. And like I say, I'm blessed to be able to call myself a Canadian. Well, I, I appreciate the explanation. And I think all I know our audience does too. They feel like they know you, but they don't know you, but now they know you a little more. And that includes me as well. So to the hiring of Corey Mace by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, it's getting the thumbs up from the Rider Nation. What's it getting from you? Well, I think it's I think it's a great hire. I I really do. I think it's you know the more you think about it, and to think one was one, one was two, one was then they got their third. That's uh, that's all. Regardless, if they interviewed Milanovic first, and there was some problem with. Either he didn't want to come or be told who was going to be on his staff, or regardless of what the problems were. And, uh, um, you know, he has the opportunity to pull out. And that doesn't mean that all of a sudden he was their top guy who pulled out. That's, that's not the case. A lot of times, it's like this year's Grey Cup. The, play, the team with the best 45 players didn't win that game. But the team with the I'm with the with the best 45 they did they were together and they won it you know because they they were together I look at this Corey base hire and the more I I think about it and I was with Corey all last year uh in Toronto got to know him very well uh, I know he was in Calgary he's a perfect match for this he doesn't give a hoot who called in after the shows last year and said they're never going back to a game or doing this or that. He's going to take that city by storm. He's excited to be there. His wife, Petra, I talked to them after the award show um, and just about, you know, hey, this Regina thing, this could happen. How do you? And, and Petra was excited about it. I think their whole, he's a young family. He's going to, he's going to become a part of the fabric of that community. That's kind of maybe what they need right now. And again, all those old timers who said, I'm not going back to any more games until Jeremy O'Day, Corey Mace could care less about that. <clears throat> He's going to have people excited. They're going to come out and support the team. His players, the one thing I can say about Corey Mace is he can attract players. Flo Arimolade was all going somewhere else. And no, he's, he came because of Corey Mace. Winton McMahon, I mean, there's a lot of guys who, when Corey Mace talks to them, they come. He had, Players love playing for him. Shane Ray, who's now with the Buffalo Bills, told me on his way out, he said, the best coach I've ever played for. Um, his thing is he's hands-on. He was a defensive coordinator, but still coached the D-line. It's going to be very interesting to see what he does as the head coach, which. Is he going to stay hands on with, you know, actually in their coaching? Uh, I doubt he'll coach a position, but, uh, you know, he's, he's a very particular guy. He's a guy that, you know, when special teams happen in practice, I go and talk to another coach or I do. Corey Mace never did that. Every time there was special teams going on, he would take, find some guys not involved in special teams and they go work on hand movements and, all those things defensive linemen do. Um, he was just, uh, he, he is just a, uh, he's very technique oriented. He's very smart X and O wise, but he is a people person. He attracts people and people who don't want to be a part of the writer organization, they're going to get left behind and they're going to end up looking like, wow, I, sh I should have got a part of this because he's going to make it exciting. 
I think he is the right guy for that situation right now. You're not going to find anybody more excited about being there than Corey. And I think that's really a crucial part of that job right now. Uh, wonderful um, endorsement of the move. What does it do to the Toronto Argonauts? Everybody's saying that Jason Shivers, who had been in Sask as the defensive coordinator, is just going to plug and play over in Toronto. Is it that simple, do you think? Will that happen? And if not, whom? What, what does this do to the Argos, losing Corey Mays? Well, obviously, when you lose a key guy, he was very involved. And I was involved back with, in, in acquiring players when we went out and, and, and got Flo and, and pick a Jagarrett Davis the year before that. And he was very involved in that that's going to change i mean there's not many people with who are as charismatic as he is and uh again he had a, he brought players in how many coaches is he going to take you know he'll probably take josh bell who was one of two secondary coaches i'm guessing willie fields will stay uh, I, I don't i this is all just me off the top of my head he'll probably try to get edwin harrison who I think will be a great offensive line coach in this league. He coached the running backs here in Toronto for two years, um, but was another one of those Calgary guys. Uh, so what will it do to Toronto? Getting players is going to be different for them on defense. Um, you know, recruiting players to come. Uh, I had Jason Shivers when I was in Toronto. He played for us and started his coaching career with us, with Chris Jones. and. Um, so Jason's a, a bright young guy. He can, you know, he can do a lot of those things. He'll have a good relationship with players. But I haven't been with him now in seven, eight years. And you don't know. I know what Corey Mace can do. And I can tell you, Toronto better get their guys signed because he will be on the phone to them. Even, I'm not saying he's going to tamper. I'm just saying <laughs> they better get that stuff done. <laughs> You would, you never did that. Hey, well, we only got 90 seconds. You and I could do two hours, but that legal tampering window, was that a significant thing to bring in? Did that fix the problem of tampering or just make what they were no. doing legal? No, it didn't really make it even. I mean, the bottom line is coaches talk to players all the time, and there's no way they can ever stop that from happening. So there's players out there right now who coaches are talking to from other teams saying, listen, if you go to free agency, we are definitely going to have an interest. Um, mostly it's position coaches, and they try to keep up with their players, but there's players on other teams that they know well. That's why we had such a beeline with Calgary, because we had the because Corey was from Calgary. And I think Calgary should be careful with their players because same thing's going to happen. And you know, it's one of those things that you just, you can't, you can't stop it. It happens in every sport and players are hit at this time with, you know, do I want to sign with the team I'm with or do I want to take a chance that maybe something better is going to be there? Well, again, I think a lot of that happens with, you know, Joey from Saskatchewan calls Billy from Montreal who coached him years ago somewhere and says, hey, listen, you know, will you guys have interest in me when I leave? You know, he's not going to hang up on it. He's going he's gonna to say, well, of course we're going to have interest. Or, you know what, if you can get this money, you should take it. And Most of the time, the coaches are pretty honest with them. But that kind of stuff happens all the time. And there's, you, you know, there's just, it, it's so near impossible to monitor. I mean, I have some great tampering stories in the cold coaching thing that when we have time one sometime, you need to book, get, get me for two segments at that side so we can talk about these things. <laughs> okay. Uh, the statute of limitations has passed on that. You can talk about it now, obviously. Jim, thank you for this. Enjoy the college ball. We'll talk to you in a week. I appreciate uh, the time. Good seeing you. Sounds great, Ron.